In my last video, I created a teapot challenge where you limit yourself using only just a few base themes, and I got a Healy Trill Shrine Onsen Obstacle Course set in Autumn in the Floating Abode, subregion number 2 using 75% of that subregion. And now I actually have to build it. So to kick things off, because we have the Healy Trill theme, that means I can use the Healy Trill Chieftain Hunt, which is such a godsend. It has a built-in staircase, which I can use to bridge from ground level to the first landform without having to sweat. I'm also using these landforms in the sort of accordion fashion to make a makeshift staircase without having to float a bunch of benches just to save a little bit of load and also a whole bunch of time because that takes up a lot of it. But here I'm putting down the foundation for the obstacle course uh, because I don't have that much space to work with. Instead of spreading things out, I'm opting to go upwards in this kind of spiral motion. I think it will turn out really nice. Here I'm starting to float a staircase made out of pine tables up from each of the landforms. I end up scrapping most of them. I did th I did this uh, floating staircase for all the landforms and then I realized afterwards, oh wait a sec, this is an obstacle course. I should should probably have some more obstacles. So I'm gonna show floating the first staircase, but after that, I'm probably gonna cut out a lot more just to save on time because I do end up scrapping most of it. Now here, because this is a shrine theme, I am putting some tour gates down. Even though I have the Hilly Trail theme, the way that I designate it is only limiting myself with the buildings when it comes to like the theme. So I can only use Hilly Trail buildings, but anything that's in other tabs, like in this case, the tour gates are in the courtyard section. Uh, that's totally fair game. At least in my mind, that's how I cope. Either way, yeah, so here's that second staircase. Again, we're cutting out most of that because it ends up going away anyway. Man, it turns out floating things, especially floating staircases, it takes so much time. I think the total amount of recorded time is about an hour and 45 minutes spent of me just floating things throughout the, uh, the entirety of this time lapse. Absolutely insane stuff. Now, you can see here I'm putting additional landforms to the side of the, the Tory gate holding landforms because they're just a little too wide to be put down on their own. They just need a little bit extra area in order to like properly go down. Here I'm just making some more tour gates because I definitely did not have enough. And now we've got the foundations for some of the obstacle course and some of the shrine aspects, but we don't have any onsen. So here we go, putting down the hot springs, uh, just some basic stools so that we can sit down for screenshots and all the fun stuff. I actually think that that second stool should have gone a little bit closer to the other one, but in order to move it, I have to like take the hot spring out, then put it back in, and it's such a hassle. Now, again, hey, this windmill is not in the building tab. It is in the courtyard section, so I think it is fair game, and I think it adds a lot of uh, motion. The the windmills themselves are like red roofed, so I feel like they actually fit Hilly Trail theme very nicely, surprisingly nicely, especially because they have a lot of that like wooden scaffolding too. And hey, speaking of which, actually, that wooden ring around the windmills is at a perfect height where if you put it down and then like clip it into that larger landform, it creates this sort of ring that almost looks like a landscaping border, which we're gonna use a little bit later on to, I think, a really cool effect. But here we have our first set of like actual obstacles, which are shrine boxes. We're floating them and they're gonna act as the stepping stones that you're gonna have to uh, sprint and jump in order to uh, be able to reach the gap and uh, get to the finish line, which is gonna be on this final landform right here. To mark the finish line, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put down a little shrine, a little offering to the boys. Some Hilly Troll pots to show that, hey, it's a it's not just an Inazuma shrine, okay? It's a Hilly Troll shrine. Praying to the god of Misa Mota. What's the Hilly Troll word for meat? Whatever it is, that's what they're praying for, obviously. A couple additional decorations just to make it look all shriny. I really like using that uh, that set of like five lanterns as the sort of finish line. Again, especially because this is shrine themed, it just feels very festive and very fitting for the theme. Got some shrubs here just to, again, pretty up the shrine. I want to make the finish line look really aesthetic and nice. You know, as more time has gone on, I've actually started to really like the brown shrubs. I feel like, ironically, they actually make things look more colorful by drawing more attention to your colorful plants, if that makes any sense. And last but not least, a little stepping stone in front of the shrine to complete the picture. Our uh, next obstacle is another windmill. This is part of the reason why I wanted windmills to be a part of the theme, too, because I can actually use the rotating windmill blade as one of the obstacles. It has a physical hitbox. If you don't time your jump right, you will get blocked by it and then you won't make the jump, which I think is so cool. I love that aspect to it. Right here, I do want there to be like a border around the area and I'm like, hey, it's an onsen, so I should probably use onsen walls, right? Well, turns out they're actually pretty small and it takes a ton of them to fill in an area and probably using up way more load than I should have been using, so portion I was using them, I ran out of materials to make them. So into the woods for more Aralia wood. You know, it's weird. I used to have this really big pine wood deficit, but ever since Inazuma stuff came out, now I I feel like I never have enough Aralia wood. It's just like all the coolest furnishings like exclusively use that wood and it drives me nuts. I never have enough of it. Also, I should probably mention that I put down a second hot spring, right? I think most onsens have 
gender split pools, right? You have one for boys, one for girls, so that's kind of what's going on here. <laughs> Although, not much of a divider between the two, but that's eh, fine. They're hilly trails. They probably don't mind. I wouldn't mind. I'm just saying. The hilly trail hut here, kind of like the receptionist center, or maybe the changing room, even though the door's wide open and you can also see through on the sides. <laughs> Hey, anything goes in Hilly Trail Land, all right? I see what that Lala Trail and Eula did, okay? It's godless territory, and I'm here for it. Either way, I'm getting a little too preemptive here putting down plants. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Save putting down your plants for the last thing you do. I ended up uh, hitting my low limit way too soon, and I had to scrap most of them. And sometimes when you clip a shrub into like a really big furnishing, there's no way to select the shrub without selecting the large furnishing. So then you have to take the large furnishing out to take out the shrub, and then to put the large furnishing back in. And sometimes that's a pain in the butt, especially if you had to float it to begin with. So just save the shrubs for last, okay? It might look pretty now, but you're gonna regret it if you don't save it for last. Anyway, okay, that's my big rant. I'm also getting way too hasty with the trees here because as you can see, woo, already hit the limit and we're not even halfway done with the build. Oh boy, yeah. This is surprisingly one of the few times I've ever done a build where I really struggled with the load limit. You know, it's always kind of a pain in the butt, but I can usually have a good sense of where I'm at and the scale of the build that I wanna do. And I very rarely have to like constantly, constantly take stuff out and tweak things to appease the low limit. But man, this build was pushing it. Putting some stepping stones down. I actually love how these look in combination with landforms. I feel like you use stepping stones and you actually don't need as many plants to still make the landforms look neat. I don't know what it is about them, but they're really cool. I hope in the future, maybe we get two or three additional uh, stone shapes. Maybe some round ones would be really cool. Just saying. Now, hey, if you were like, hey, bro, you're using windmills, that's cheating, that's not a hilly troll thing, uh, think again, bozo. Rest in peace, pack watch. Because we are floating hilly troll huts onto the top of the windmills to make them hilly troll windmills. Hell yeah. They literally have the same color as the windmill roof. It's perfect. Although the one thing that I didn't realize was going on with hilly troll huts is they actually have a ring of stone and like mossy grass underneath them, which you can kind of see if you pause the video. Another low limit. God dang. So yeah, here I'm taking away all the onsen walls, replacing them with these like wood picket fences instead. I feel like these definitely give off more hilly trillion vibes. Kind of takes away from the onsen experience of, you know, being able to see through the walls. But uh, ultimately, I end up using way less of these to fill in the same amount of space. And again, they kind of reinforce the hilly trill theme. So I think it's still a win-win overall. And I still use the onsen fences as sort of the end pieces just so it's not all samesy, and I think I think it adds to the effect a little bit. The one thing I'm still not sure about is the actual low limit of the pieces. Like, I don't know if individually those things still take up the same amount as one of the aunts and walls do, and so overall I am, am saving on my low limit. Or maybe they cost more limit individually, and so it just kind of evens out. But the one thing I am certain on is I want a more ornate entrance. I want something that really embodies all of the themes that we're using for this challenge. So, onsen, shrine, hilly trail, all combined into one. Oh, and I guess obstacle course too, which you'll see in a bit. I also want to make sure to put down some onsen decorations in the starting area because those are the same ones that we're going to be using for the obstacles later on in the course. Clipping in some hilly trail archery posts, I think is what those are. God <laughs> dang it! It's never ending, man. Like I was saying, I do want all the themes to be present at the entrance. So we have hilly trail, we got the shrine, we got the onsen. It's time to move on to the windmill landscaping. So this bigger square landform that I have, I set it tight to 6.5, which is the perfect type for when you clip a windmill into it. Just the very top part of that ringed uh, like fencing pokes out of the ground, makes it look like landscaping lining. And when you put a bunch of plants in there, I think it looks really neat. I really love this combination and I'm probably gonna be using it in the future with like other plants and stuff, depending on what the theme is. Here you see me, I have to yoink all the shrubs that I put down previously because again, I was way too hasty with it and I didn't save for last. And so now I'm like scrounging around, trying to work with load limits yet again to get the landscaping that I actually want and I actually need. Putting in a shrine box to reinforce it being like a, you know, shrine thingamajig. And uh, this broke my heart. I was like, yeah, man, this is an obstacle course. I need more obstacles. Spent like an hour doing those staircases and I had to scrap them all. But hey, sometimes that's just how it is. Sometimes you get so caught up in the moment of doing your build that you don't really take a step back to see if it works with like the overall picture. And in that case, the staircase didn't. So instead of floating in a bucket as the first starting obstacle, it's a little bit bigger, so it's pretty easy to jump on there. Uh, ramping up the difficulty by having these two signs, which are much, much thinner, much more difficult to land on. Uh, and uh, 
In retrospect, it might not have been the best choice for an obstacle, but I wanted to keep the, like, onsen objects as the theme for the obstacles, so. Uh, they still work just fine, but basically when you jump onto it, you kind of slide off and grab onto the ledge instead, uh, which is still kind of cool. I, I still like that mechanic, so that's why I kept it in, but. Clipping in the obstacle ring, you actually can't clip it in by itself. It's kind of like a companion where you have to use a landform to clip it in, so. Just using another square landform to do that and get it all squared up. And... With that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a completed build, but this would not be a true obstacle course build if I didn't give it a test run myself. So I say, let's fucking do this shit. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the Burger Emporium Racetrack Expositorium. Action, drama, romance. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see it all on the track as this child fights himself to be crowned a man. A speedy start from this for two-wee boy wonder, but I wonder, has he blown off too much steam? We're coming up to our first obstacle of the year. And he clears the gap. No stamina left for the second trial, though, and ooh. After retracing his steps yet again, he comes up to the final ordeal. Oh, slap me silly and call me Betsy Lou. We have ourselves a champion. Ooh, uh, no. Okay, that's not gonna do it all. I gotta juice up. Alright, here we go, here we go. I'm gonna roid up. Now I'm gonna make this course my bich. Alright, the rerun. Rematch. I can feel it in my loins. This is the one. We're saving stamina, we are conserving. Alright, now we have enough for the bucket. Ooh, okay, I missed the jump, but it's fine. Oh, we get the slide. We got the tuck off. Good. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I barely have any stamina. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Saved. We still have... Oh, and there it is. 32 seconds. Okay. S wasted a couple seconds there, clutching it out and saving the run. But overall, hey, a clear improvement, and that's all we can ask for. And... There I have it. That was the challenge. Honestly, I had a ton of fun with this. I'm definitely going to be using my teapot limiter challenge uh, going forward. I think that's just going to be the best way for me to uh, like come up with ideas that I honestly normally would never have thought. Like I never would have thought of piecing together Hilly Troll with Onsen. So I had a blast with this. Again, if you haven't seen the other video, highly recommend checking it out, giving the challenge a try, and seeing what kind of wonky, crazy combinations you can personally come up with too. If you enjoyed the video, hitting it with a like and even subscribing to the channel does a lot to help me out. And either way, thanks a ton for watching.